Hello, everybody. So uh, today we have the pleasure to receive uh, Lenny Basconis from Spain. Uh, she did her undergrad and PhD studies at the Univers Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. She got her PhD in 2000. Then she went to the US uh, to Texas for a postdoc. She did another postdoc in Switzerland, and then she went back to Spain. Since uh, 2009, she's a researcher at Instituto de Ciencia de Materiales de Madrid, where she is now. And uh, today she will uh, talk to us about quantum phases in uh, Moahe heterostructures. So Lenny, thanks a lot for accepting the invitation. It's with you now. Okay, so um, thank you very much. First of all, thanks uh, to Carolina for the, um, for the invitation. Uh, to give this this um, this talk, so well with the idea of the colloquium, I'm going to give a quite generic talk on on what are the uh, the quantum phases in in that have been found in the last years in the uh, more heterostructures. structures. Uh, I then I hope you are going to see that this field which is just amazingly interesting. And then well, I will in the last part of the talk, I'm going to discuss um, uh, some some of the results that we. Um, we have found in one of these more structures, in particular in the ABC trilayer on boron nitride. Well, okay, so now if, before we are talking about this was not working, so now it's not working, uh, but let's see. Oh, okay, I can do that. Okay, so well, we know this is this is the city of Madrid. This is my city. Sorry, before I'm going to, the, the word I'm going to present at the end I done it in collaboration with Maria Jose Calderon from my same institute and with Alberto Camhagi from Universidad de Buenos Aires. Well, so this is Madrid, this is my city. And of course, well, in Madrid, we live um, a lot of people like in um, many other cities, also in Brazil. And then, well, in a, any case in which we are, um, uh, there are a lot of people interacting, or so we can see that the behavior that we have depends on all these interactions between the people, okay? So there is a kind of behavior, a kind of emergent behavior, which is associated to the interaction between the people. And of course, this is not just uh, the, something that happens with people. This is also something that happens in general in nature when we have many particles and we have, well, we are used to see um, a lot of um, phase transitions in nature which are reflecting these um these interactions so for example these are the the transition the solid liquid and gas transitions and in particular for in many of these cases for example in, in the solid um we can have uh some kind of symmetry breaking in particular in a solid we have uh translational symmetry is broken and we have uh the lattices in the liquid in principle we don't have the um, the, uh, this kind of symmetry breaking, but we can also have some kind of, um, in, in some situation, like for example, in the uh, liquid crystals, we can have some kind of uh, symmetry breakings like the one that you observe here in which the rotational symmetry is broken. We have this pneumatic situation. Uh, so, uh, well, we are going to, in, in our system, we are going to, um, consider the electrons. So we have a lot of electrons, of course, and normally, uh, so in solids, we use bound theory to describe them. This is the basis of all the um, uh, solid state physics. And in general, in, in uh, band uh, theory, uh, we assume that the electrons so can, can be described as if they were effectively um, independent particle or very weakly interact uh, interacting particles with uh, with the atoms or with so we just have a kind of uh, periodic potential um, but of course electrons repel each other and we can also have um, uh, phases which are associated to uh, these interactions in fact there are many different kind of phases you have here some examples like we can have some examples in which we have um, uh, symmetry breakings. You have here some examples in which uh, there is um, uh, spin order or there is charge order and it can be with uh, the lattice. Uh, the, so here, 
of course, the electrons see the uh, symmetry of the lattice, but we can break the symmetry of the lattice, like in an antiferromagnet or in a charge density wave. We can break both the lattice and the rotational symmetry, like for example, with these stripes. We can break only the rotational symmetry without, without breaking the translational symmetry, like in pneumatic uh, systems that can be charged to spin. So there are many, many possibilities. And of course, uh, superconductivity is one of these possibilities, while in this case we need um, an effective attraction to, to form the, the Cooper case. Uh, the, the phase that is normally considered the quintessential of the um, uh, strong correlations are the mott insulators. Um, so in this case, the um, electrons which are uh, uh, described as itinerant electrons, and in fact are itinerant in the band picture, uh, repel them each other so strongly as to uh, become localized. No? So, and then it's better to describe when, when uh, so when we have this localization, we have a transition from the band to the, um, uh, so from a metal to an insulator, uh, in which the electrons become better described as local spins. So, uh, well, the mode behavior, the mode insulating behavior is very strongly linked to um, integer fillings. And in particular, so uh, you can see here how, for example, just changing very, very slightly the um, um, filling of this uh, compound, we have this transition from an insulator to a metal. Uh, well, this small transition does not require symmetry breaking, but usually there is going to be some kind of orbit, which is very often magnetic and especially um, antiferromagnetic. So uh, what is what uh, is going to control what, uh, whether we have a quantum phase or not? Um, so well, um, in particular, so it's going to be the um, energetics. So uh, here is, uh, there are going to be uh, the two players, the uh, kinetic energy and the uh, interaction energy, the repulsion. So what is going to determine, so in order to have the uh, these phases, of course, we have to reduce the energy. And normally, what so so what we will uh, want to have to have these energies is that the ratio between the potential energy, the interaction energy, and the kinetic energy. So this ratio is large. So in general, we are going to find uh, these uh, electronic phases in regions in which there is a high density of state, and in particular, whenever we have. Uh, bands which are very flat, so these, these uh, phases are going to be uh, promoted. Of course, there are going to be many other issues that are going to influence uh, on whether we have these, uh, these uh, phases or which phase do we have. These are the dimensionality, this is the um, whether the, uh, so which is the, the, um, the lattice, so for example, there are some cases in which um, the inner, the system is frustrated, so the lattice is frustrated, like in a triangular lattice, and so uh, so so this can um, suppress tendencies to order. It's going to be important the kind of interaction. So um, well, in principle, with electrons we have um, a one over interactions, but we know in many cases this is a screen, and so we can reduce that to simpler uh, interaction in which. Um, uh, only the electrons which are in the same side interact. There are numeric carriers, the, the shape of the Fermi surface, but also external conditions. And so well, so there are uh, materials which show um, um, strong uh, effects of correlations. There are, these are the materials uh, that we call strongly correlated materials. And you have here the most important families uh, and you can see that we have uh, very complex phase diagrams where normally there are different uh, phases which, which appear when we just change a bit the um, external conditions like the doping, like the pressure, or like the magnetic field. And you can see in particular, so for example, in all these cases, 
you see that in many cases superconductivity um, emerges from um, strong correlations in, in these systems. So you see that is is in, in all these families, and in general is close to another uh, phase. Okay, um, all these systems have some similarities, but all of them have also some uh, differences. So there, there's going to be some some common thing, but but when we study them, there will be also some difference. Of course, among them, well, the most studied and the, the one that seems to be the most complex systems are the high DC cuprates. And uh, in particular, these systems are most insulators when they are so-called undop, in which in this system we have a particular filling of the band in which uh, so that we have a half-filled band, so an, an just one electron per band. And then uh, superconductivity appears when we dope this band, when we destroy this insulator. Uh, so beside this region in which we have multi insulator that orders anthropomagnetically, so we have a lot of other um, effects that we don't understand uh, completely well. And in particular, for example, we have here this strange metal in which the resistivity is linear with temperature. Well, so this is a topic in which People have been working a lot for the last uh, in the last decades. Uh, in the last decades, another field in which people has worked a lot is, of course, graphene. That's I guess that everybody has is very familiar with. And uh, well, of course, we can study here the physics of the two dimensions, uh, the fact that the electrons behave relativistically, or the applications. So there has been uh, efforts to make uh, graphene superconductor. Graphene is is a not superconductor, but there have been some, some efforts to, to do that. And in general, well, what, well there, are, there are some effects of the electronic interactions in, uh, in graphene. It is not considered to be particularly correlated. Uh, well, after graphene created uh, all these excitations, uh, well, people realized this is not the only material that we can have in two dimensions. And well, there are other materials uh, uh, like you can see here that can exfoliate, and people started doing um, these um, uh, heterostructures in which you can create new uh, systems just uh, putting different, uh, different two D materials one on top of the other. But also, people could do um, heterostructures uh, that could even have the same material but uh, create a different structure, like for example here, uh, there is what is called a moire structure, in which you can see that, well, so here there are two layers of graphene which are rotated, uh, and, and you can see that due to the fact that there is this lapis mismatch associated to this rotation, there is on top of this atomic um, uh, structure, there is uh, a larger uh, superstructure that makes that our unicell is much larger. So, well, people have, um, uh, 10 years ago, people saw that, well, there was uh, in a particular situation in considering this, um, this case in which there are two layers of graphene which are rotated, and in the particular situation in which there is uh, one degree, uh, uh, or around one degree, one can have very flat bands here. Uh, so close to the, this is in what is called the HR neutrality or the system is not top. And so you can see them here better. And so, well, uh, as we have said before, so if we have um, a very flat bands, so then it's possible that we can find um, a correlated state. And so, well, the, uh, uh, then the excitement uh, came in 2008 when uh, Pablo uh, Jarillo Herrero from MIT uh, studied, he was studying this uh, kind of um, heterostructure uh, and in particular, uh, well, he has this angle around this 1.1 angle. So this angle, in fact, I didn't mention before, is called magic angle. So because this is, um, um, uh, flat bands here. So, with the help of a gate, he was able to uh, dope the system. And he thought, well, so somehow we know that if if the doping is 
Uh, something that one expects is that the doping is here in what is called the adopt. So here we have not put doping, this is a chart neutrality. So well, the system is um, semi-metal, so there are the direct points, and so somehow we expect a minimum in the conductance. So if there are four electrons or four holes, so this has been seen already before, um, there are, uh, the system is an insulator, this is a band insulator, but what it was surprising is that, well, when this band was uh, half filled, both the conduction band or the balance band, so they were correlated, so they were insulators, and at that feeling one was expecting to have a metal. So this was clear that these insulators were associated to uh, the correlations. So in particular, um, so this um, here, what they had, it was two electrons, uh, they have those two electrons per, per this big more uh, unit cell or two holes. And uh, so here the fact that there is two is because even if I'm plotting just here, there is what is called the valid degeneracy. So there are two, um, two bands here, okay? Two conduction bands and two balance bands, okay? So then half its half field band can, can have two electrons and then doping all the conduction band is what is called here for electrons. And so the excitement was even much more when he realized that very close to uh, this um, region, so there was superconductivity. So well, the excitement was really amazing at that time. So um, any of us who were at the March meeting when this work was presented can, can really say that, how people was really excited. That was uh, published uh, that very same week. Uh, of course, here there, is, there, there was a lot of excitement because, well, of course, graphene was superconductor. Uh, that was one thing. Uh, but it's not the same if it's just um, uh, a phonon induced superconductor or whether uh, what it was, uh, it was suggested uh, here, and, and that's something that we still don't know, uh, is that it looks that it was a non conventional superconductor. But of course, here, the, the, what it was really key also, it was to, to create this excitement, it was the similarity between this phase diagram in which there is this insulating state and this two metallic, two superconducting, sorry, uh, domes at, at, the, uh, at both sides with the uh, cuprate um, phase diagram. Uh, in this case, we don't have high temperature superconductivity, so the critical temperature is, is, um, is low in absolute values, but it, uh, however, it's high with respect to the energy scales in the system. So, so it's a strong uh, coupled superconductor. Um, so there were also other reasons to, um, uh, to believe, to, 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 well, to think that this system was very, very important. So on one side, um, is that it introduced uh, a new uh, length scale. So normally we are used to have um, atomic um, systems uh, in which, well, the distances, the characteristic distances are um, like one, uh, so are like a few Armstrongs, um, and here they are much, much larger because they are, these are the ones of these um, uh, superstructures, so they are, they are, they are 10, 15 nanometers. And so there are uh, 10,000 atoms uh, of the order of 10,000 atoms per unit cell, which is really um, challenging uh, a description, an atomic description like that. I will talk more later. Then um, there is, uh, so if, if we think on, on how was the change from the insulator here to the superconductor, so we, we can consider the system as the most diluted uh, superconductor. So in reality, they more or less added like one electron per each, somehow like 40,000 atoms. Uh, but another thing is that they could dope with a gate. So, uh, and this means, so normally here, if one is uh, doping here, like in cuprate, it's, it's a time you have to change the sample and so on, and you can dope very little because doping atomically, you can only uh, dope like 0 0.1 electrons per unit cell, 0 0.2 electrons, something like that. Here you can dope with uh, several um, integers. So, but then also it's open also a lot of other possibilities and in the sense that 
Uh, so the um, the uh, one can do systems in which the um, uh, the structure can be different. So, for example, here there are instead of having just two layers with uh, a, a, a twist, there are two bilayers. So this is a bilayer, this is a bilayer, so there's a twist in between. One can do systems in which there are two, um, uh, so there are three layers and there are two twist angles. Uh, one can do moires in a different way in which you don't need, you don't have a twist. Uh, so in particular here, what is used is the fact that um, you uh, align the graphene with boronitrite, so in the sense that there are two, so the lattice is very close, but not exactly the, the lattice constant, and so you, uh, this is another way to, to, uh, to build the moiré, and you can also have, um, uh, to the, so you can also use another different to the materials which are not graphene, like here, this artistic charcoalinite, that in fact they can be equal, the two layers, or they can be different. So, in all these systems, people have already observed and now on um, um, uh, correlated states. So this has really opened a field which is very, very large and which is changing constantly. You can even combine things like this, like for example, playing with the substrate in the in the twist uh, uh, situations. In this one, people have also observed superconductivity. In some others, there were hints of superconductivity. They have even even published in. Uh, but but somehow it's believed that it's not it's not clear whether this superconductivity. Most of the people believe that, for example, if these two systems, this is the trilayer align with the a, a boronitrite that I will talk about later, and um, or these two uh, double bilayer graphene, they were claimed to be superconducting. But now people is really they don't believe it's that. Um, so another important thing is the impressive to, uh, tunability that they have these systems. So um, they have, uh, besides the temperature and the doping that we saw at the beginning, and now the, well, the twist angle and the substrate alignment that we have seen, or the type of heterostructure, um, it's possible to play with pressure, uh, with a strain, uh, also with a perpendicular electric field or magnetic field, so to, to tune the, the bands, okay? So then we have, we may have different systems, so different kind of band structures, but also uh, with this, in this way, we can modify more the bands, and in this way, we can also modify more the um, phase diagram. And we can also do a screen. So again, here there are some examples. Just for example, people have been able to um, tune the uh, superconducting critical temperature with, with pressure. You can see here how with the pressure, so it has changed. Uh, this is, for example, an example on how uh, with a perpendicular electric field. So this is without a field, the bands on and, and the twist trilayer graphene, and this is with a field, you can see that there is um, a difference here in the bands. And here, this is doping, this is electric field, this is a resistivity plot. You can see that there are um, important differences uh, as a function of the electric field. So it's a, a, an external knob. And uh, screening is another way in which we can play in, uh, in this system, which is, uh, is less obvious in, in other correlated material. So for example, here you have, um, uh, well, an example of what's possible to do. This is twist bilayer graphene here, and they have placed um, a bilayer graphene and then charging this bilayer graphene, doping this bilayer graphene when it's modifying the, um, the um, interaction here. And so they have been able to tune the, um, the insulating gap. Well, with so many possibilities, people is observing really uh, a lot of, um, of um, effects. Uh, just to give you an example. So this is, um, uh, so it's not only this um, insulating state that people observe or only the uh, superconductivity. So for example, also, even for example, if you are in the metallic state, there are clear um, uh, correlation effects. For example, this uh, it has been observed uh, that the resistivity 
is linear in temperature, similar to what I have found, I, I mentioned before in the cuprate. There, um, there is uh, doping dependent density of states. As you can see here, this is clearly that this is a not non rigid band shift. And here, uh, when it when it's away from the insulators, there is what it has been called the cascade of phase transition, which has been interpreted in terms of spin and malipolized states. There are pneumatic states in which the uh, the uh, rotational symmetry of the lattice has been broken. There are topological phases. There are also insulating states at fractional fillings. To give you an idea of how fast this um, uh, this is the field is going. Um, so I told you that um, we became very excited three years ago when we saw this. Um, these two correlated insulating states uh, and superconductivity around. Um, so these two domes here. In January 2019, so it was clear that everything was even much more complex. So there were correlated states. This is for TVG. So in particular, these systems are for different type of systems, but some of them have been observed in, in several systems, some of these probabilities. So here, uh, so it was observed that superconductivity was present in, in a much larger region of the phase space. There were several um, correlated um, states at all the interior filling. As of last month, this is, these are the insulating states which appear in a single sample from compressibility measure as a function of the filling and the magnetic field. So all these lines is where they can detect that in fact there are different kind of insulators. So the physics here is, is really going beyond the imagination and, and there is still a lot of things that, um, that we can understand and that we have to understand and that for sure we still think that many more things will be observed. So uh, now in the last part, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Um, this, of course, is, um, has opened a lot of um, challenges. So it's giving us a lot of work to understand these systems and to study them, both from the theoretical and from the experimental point of view. Uh, uh, so from the experiment, so from the theoretical point of view, so we have had to change, so people have had to change uh, the way of looking at the system. So in particular, Ah uh, well, so as I said, there is 11 atoms per unit cell. So normally, people in a correlated system has it used to do LDA. Then one has a good knowledge of the bands and all that, and then use that for doing a model most usually. But then here, well, there are 11 atoms per unit cell. So this is clearly a challenge for LDA. So normally, what people is doing, of course, we we have information about how are these bands as uh, we have later, I will mention more, but we, there are a lot of uncertainties yet. But so people normally, or they do some kind of atomistic uh, type binding LDA. So, so they're, they're atomistic, but they're inspired by, by information that LDA in some systems in which it can be computed. But uh, there are people is also doing, this is the most uh, common uh, way, there uh, is doing um, uh, some kind of KP model starting from graphene and assuming that there is this interlayer channeling and, and the rotation. Uh, here there is uh, one of the issues uh, that is that uh, there are important effects associated to the relaxation. So the, the layers are not flat. And so this affects um, the, um, the bands at the, um, uh, at the at energies which are really comparable with the bands. So it can be important for some aspect. And also, it's not very clear, it's starting to show up that whether there is a substrate or not can influence also the parameters. Now, for the um, uh, issue of the uh, how we study correlations, there are different approaches. Uh, well, there is people uh, uh, that is using an atomistic description. So we really have a lot of um, atoms, but this is one of the, um, the ways in which people is, is studying that. Um, so um, just really starting from the, the, the carbon atoms. 
There is people, most of the people, in fact, is using um, a continuum model based on case space. So you really have a description in case space, not in local space. But of course, for studying many uh, properties, and in particular, if you want to study whether mod physics is important in these systems, you would like to want a real space model uh, based on Banner functions. Here, Banner functions, I mean Banner functions for all the moiré, for all the um, the unit cell, not atomistic like. So you would like to have this kind of tie binding plus uh, interactions model, uh, like the Hubbard model, like for example, uh, we have used a lot in, in cuprates or in um, iron superconductors or models similar to the ones of the heavy fermions. And here there has been another issue which has come uh, to complicate our lives, which is topology. So, well, in general, so uh, all these systems are described as um, uh, taking the, uh, the, ballet, the, the bands for each of the ballets of, of graphene. And in particular, well, there can be two situations. One is that the bands are called trivial in the sense that they are not topological. And so we can build um, a, a model based on Banner functions for this system. Uh, uh, but in, in several of these systems, the bands are topological. So, so in fact, these flat bands are topological. So what means that no Banner model is possible? We cannot build such a model. And so, so this, this kind of description are just not given, not, not uh, expected to be able to be built because this, in fact, the, the definition of the topology. So um, in TBG in particular, there is um, a special situation so it's known that these, so these are the bands that we are interested in. These are the bands from where the correlated states appear. Um, so, but these bands, we know that they are topological. So it was proposed that, uh, well, so here the topology is what it has been called a fragile topology in the sense that, well, so this uh, is not that this, so, so even if these bands are topological, we can't solve the problem just adding more bands to, um, to the model. And so you can see that doing that, one can get a very good description. But this has been, is still under discussion. In fact, well, last year it was uh, proposed that uh, really the topology here is, is robust and that uh, one really cannot build such a, um, a Banner function model. So I think it can, that to, to at least to some extent that somehow this is still a situation which is under discussion. Uh, from the experimental point of view, this has also given um, a lot of challenges, but also at some point there will be opportunities of finding new ways of looking at the system. Uh, there is a still a lot of uh, uncontrolled sample dependence. So somehow, uh, mostly experimentally say, okay, I see this in the sample, but there is a still, sometimes they don't always see exactly the same things and they, they still don't know very well uh, why, but there are issues like, to disangle disorder, unwanted strain, substrate, and so on. But also, there is another issue, which is the fact of how are these systems. So for those of us like me who are coming from correlated electrons, um, so when you have, um, a, a, for example, a cuprate and ion superconductors, so you are used to study, in theory, uh, but you're used to study, uh, like what is what you expect to have in, in photomission, in optical conductivity, in neutron scattering, whatever. So this, this type of, um, in this system, uh, because of the two-dimensionality of the system and the, the fact that we have them in, and also we have this large unit cell. So some of the techniques that we are used to are, are a challenge. Um, so for example, uh, there is, people is doing some optical experiments, but we still don't have any, uh, uh, let's say, optical conductivity um, spectrum in the system. Um, there is a, this is what we have for ARPE, so we know that there is a flat band, but we don't have uh, knowledge of how is the Fermi surface, we don't have real knowledge of how is the, um, the band structure of this system. And as I mentioned, there are, we, we really have a lot of uncertainties which are important for, for the real description of this system. In, in some other of the uh, systems, uh, the situation is even more complex because uh, this is, in fact, the system I'm going to talk about now. But um, so some of the phases that are observed, we can reach them when 
um, we apply a perpendicular electric field. But somehow this is, um, uh, to make that, we have a bottom gate and a top gate. So, for example, some of the experiments here, uh, or some of the results here have been obtained, let's say, with an STM. So we cannot come here and put the STM if we want to have, or we have the STM, or we have the electric field, in the sense. And so there are uh, some uh, regions of the phase space, and sometimes they can be the interesting regions, in which uh, uh, we are going to have more difficulties than um, to study the system. Of course, there are properties like transport or compressibility or things like that that we can uh, that can be studied. So this is this is something which is it has been well. So for the people working to do in graphene things like that, so so they're um, more common. But but is is that some of the these aspects that has been studied in the other strongly correlated electrodes now have we have to see the way in which we we characterize some of the properties. So well, in the last part of the talk, I'm going to focus on one specific one, which is the ABC trilayer on on the boron nitride. And uh, so, in particular, uh, so um, well, in this case, there has been different correlated states um, observed. So before, let me introduce how is this system. Um, so in this system, we start from uh, a trilayer graphene, and here ABC is associated to how this um, uh, layers are um, stuck. Uh, so these are the two um, uh, sublattices in graphene. Um, in this system, already even without the moiré, so the bands close to uh, charge neutrality are already uh, quite flat. And if the uh, if an electric field is applied, um, uh, here a gap is open. So you can see here these are for different different colors are for different values of the. A perpendicular electric field. So then uh, you can see that well the, the electric field helps to um, tune the bands already in the system without the moiré. Uh, so if we now align this system with the boron nitride, which has uh, also an hexagonal lattice but a uh, slightly different lattice structure, we have the moiré which, which has a triangular lattice, the moiré, and and a, a lattice constant of the order of 15 nanometers. And here in this big superstructure, so there is a folding of the bands, and here there is this. Uh, so, so we see that we get some flat bands, okay? So here, as I mentioned before, there are two bands, which is associated to the fact that we have two valleys. So here, I have only plotted one, but there will be one that it will be related by time traversal. So instead of having the minimum here, at the uh, K point, we, it will have be here. Okay. 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 So just a second. I will open that again. Uh. Okay. Um, so okay. So it's, it's going to say so here only one of the values is plotted, but we will have to later. You will see a bit more. So if now we apply a perpendicular electric field here, so we open a gap here, and then we have a balance band which is isolated. Uh, so in this system, applying the two gates. Uh, so it's possible, as I said, to tune both the doping and the uh, field. So in particular, you have here, this is bottom gate, top gate, and this is a resistivity plot. So here, then the um, moving in this direction, one change the filling, and moving in this direction, one change the electric field. So here in this region, one is um, uh, lo looking at what is characterized in the conduction band, and here the balance band. So here the one that the, the flat band that we have here isolated is the balance band and it's where one observes the uh, these effects that these are, in fact you see these changes are associated to uh, the emergence of insulating states. 
In fact, you can see that moving in this direction, it's quite different what we observe here in the positive side and here in the negative side. And so this is because in this system in particular, so depending on, uh, so the, the, we don't expect to have, um, um, we don't expect to have uh, symmetry with respect to the sign, and that's associated uh, with where the, the fact that the bottom nitrite is only in one of the uh, aligning with one of the layers. And in particular is that depending on whether it's the sign of, the, um, of this field, so uh, we will have bottom band or, so sorry, we will have a trivial band or a topological band. Um, so I will talk about the, uh, the case in which we have a trivial band. So in here, in the case in which there is a trivial band, so it was observed that there were two insulating states that appear when there was one hole or two holes per moire unit cell. So in here, one hole is associated to having quarter filling, and two holes are associated to having half filling of the band. So from the very beginning, there is a discussion on whether, so this is an issue on whether these states are uh, mod system. So this is not just in this more so in all the more so it's, it's not really clear yet whether um, uh, here mod physics is important or whether it's much more some kind of more conventional band physics. So another interesting thing is where there is any symmetry breaking in with one and this in this system particularly has become even more important because recently people have observed very similar results even without having the money, without having the alignment. So, and in fact, they have um, interpreted that just in, ter in terms of stoner for alignments. Um, so, well, so in this model, so what we have is, uh, we, we are going to study, what we are going to study is the type of mod physics that we can expect. And in particular, we have this three layer, we have this uh, triangular system. And for this system, so it was proposed that for this trivial man, uh, what we have is, is uh, we can build a, a binary model in, in terms of the, um, uh, so binary model, if, which is a kind of two orbital model in which each of the orbitals is a, it's a valley. Um, so the, these binary functions or the model that one can build has a sizable hoppings up to at least uh, four neighbor. And then, well, the, the hoppings in the two uh, valleys, they are related by time reversal symmetry, time reversal symmetry and they are um, complex. Uh, so you can see here, before I was telling here, I'm plotting the two valleys. So one is the, the blue one and the other one is the red. Uh, so with the fill, we um, modify the bands and then um, we are going to, to choose one of the valleys. Uh, so you can see what I was mentioning to you about the fact that the so so we we want to have uh, well when we look at the interactions so in these systems in general uh, so you are going to see that it's not trivial whether we just can uh, what terms are going to be important so in particular so for this model they um, so Tang Santil who proposed this model also projected the interactions and then well they saw that. These are the, the values of the interactions. So there are both, this is the so-called Haber, Haber um, interaction that is of the order of 25 million electron volts. The intersite is also large. Uh, and then there are several other terms, which is like the on-site coupling, the intersite first neighbor, and even other terms like assisted hopping, which are like much smaller. So somehow this looks that this terms are the most important ones. So uh, in particular, uh, I'm going to simplify a bit more the model. Um, so somehow, uh, so if there is no charge uh, modulation, so the effect of an uh, intersite interaction can be um, e somehow effectively introduced um, in as an effective haber. So I'm going to consider a, a haber model in which this U is going to be a kind of effective. So I'm not going to assume a particular value. Another issue is that these bands, so there are also some uncertainty in how the bands, and I'm going to study them with dynamical mean field theory as implemented in the Radbias code. I'm going to focus on, on a half field in the particular case in which we have two holes 
uh, doping from here, from above. Um, so, well, you can see this is first, I'm going, I'm assuming that uh, I'm, I'm enforcing first not to have a symmetry breaking. And so here you can see uh, uh, that we expect, this is also happening in other mode systems, um, some spectral weight reorganization. So there is, uh, we see how this band, so this is the non-interacting band, and so I'm, we are increasing U. Uh, and so one can see how, well, this band, which is pushed to higher energies, and then, well, so somehow these bands are, are renormalized, are becoming thinner until, and some value of U, which is um, of the order of, of 28 mil electron volts, the system becomes insulating. And we have all the spectral weight is incoherent. So it's here in the so-called Hubbard bands. And so, well, so something that we expect is that our uh, density of state is going to be uh, dope independent. So you can see this is, for example, it's not going to be a rigid band shift. And it will also depend on, uh, so if we are very close to the um, uh, mode transition, we will also see uh, some uh, temperature dependence. In fact, with uh, temperature, this band is expected to be uh, more um, incoherent. So somehow the, the fact is that if this kind of description applies for the system, what we expect to have is, we expect to have a normal state, which even if it's still metallic, is uh, going to be modified. So now, uh, regarding to what kind of symmetry breaking we expect or whether we expect them, so in fact, there has been, um, uh, so if we know that, well, uh, how our systems uh, uh, have the tendency uh, to order. Uh, as I said before, so mod, we used to have a tendency toward um, uh, magnetism, in, in particular, if we just have the Hubbard model towards antiferromagnetism. We are in a triangular lattice in which um, the standard antiferromagnetic state, the nil state, is uh, frustrated. But there can be other orderings. And in particular, so it was proposed in, in another uh, work, uh, recent work by Chimiao Sianpo workers, that, uh, well, so they found, they did some variation on Monte Carlo. Uh, in particular, they found the system as a function of Wundt's coupling for some specific values of the interaction. And they found uh, that there is a kind of strike antiferromagnetism. Uh, so, um, but the, Possible, there was there's another possible um, stripe antiferrobale, which is a kind of antiferro orbital. Somehow they didn't find this, and this just was not, was disappeared without Hunt's coupling. Uh, so in our case, we don't have Hunt's coupling, but we have also found some kind of ordering. We cannot say exactly with uh, single side dynamical mean field theory what kind of um, ordering it is. So we know it's antiferromagnetic, but we believe this is the, um, the same state that Jimmy Aussi found. Uh, the difference is that we find both, the, so we have find that both the antiferrospin and the antiferro valley are um, degenerate. And well, so this state is, is uh, strongly li uh, linked to MOT, so both in interactions and in uh, filling. Uh, the state, it remains up to a temperature of the order of 3 Kelvin, what is compatible with the um, energies uh, that, that we observe the, the difference in energy associated to, to, to this state. Um, and interestingly, if we are um, close to the mode transition, but still below the mode transition, we find that this antiferromagnetic state is uh, is metallic. So most of the time, normally antiferromagnetic state, not always, are um, insulated. Uh, but if we are in this region, it's, this is metallic, but this is not necessarily fermiliquid. We, we find some regions in which it's non fermiliquid. Now, the question of whether we expect this state, so before I say, okay, these terms are much larger in, in, in than, than these other terms, what is true? But now here, if we look at these terms, 
So uh, we can see that, well, Hunz Kaplan is there. This will select one of the orderings that we have found, this antiferromagnetic uh, ordering with respect to the ballet ordering. Um, but what is uh, more uh, interesting is the fact that we have this intersite Fresnel's neighbor. And if we compare that with the energy of the um, antiferromagnetic state that we uh, find, so they are of the same order of magnitude. So at this point, one cannot say whether uh, which one is larger because an order of magnitude, but uh, it could be that is the one that disappeared. So what is more important, I think, is the fact that uh, they have similar or even smaller energies uh, than, than the external energies that we can use. So it can be possible that there are possibilities to tune or that they are going to be um, competing. So well, um, then um, I hope just to summarize, um, I hope that I have uh, convinced you that these uh, more heterostructures are a really uh, very interesting uh, systems where one can study um, uh, when it's getting a lot of physics. The three largest um, um, fields in condensed matter, uh, so the, the ones that have been mostly studied in the last two decades, two D materials, the correlations and the topology merge in a single um, system. And then, uh, well, we have studied with respect to our specific work, we have studied the uh, properties uh, of the ABC graphene on uh, boron nitride, aligned with boron nitride, and then with an effective Howard model. And we have seen that, well, we expect to have a kind of strongly modified normal state and, and uh, dopamine temperature dependence. And uh, we have found a state and, which is antiferromagnetic and that most probably breaks a rotational symmetry. Uh, which is uh, maybe a slightly metallic, in, but with, it will compete with other terms that we could have thought it would be very, we could throw away. And so it's not clear that they uh, um, uh, can be thrown away. Okay, so thank you. Thanks, Lenny. Very interesting talk. I will invite everybody to unmute the microphones so that we can thank Lenny. Uh, this section is now open for questions. I see that there is one. Oh, okay. I think it's maybe Adol because he uses the graduate program uh, account. I is it Adol? Sorry. Sorry for that. Please. It's me. Yes, so okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, for organizing this. Thank you uh, for the great uh, talk, Lenny. Uh, my question is can you? Tell us anything about uh, the importance of phonons in all this physics, specifically uh, the superconductivity in graphene. Are there any arguments in favor or against the importance of phonons there? So, well, um, there have been several issues already with phonons. Well, first, it's not clear whether uh, superconductivity uh, phonon induced or unconventional. This is still not clear at this point. Uh, so, for example, it appears superconductivity in many cases, in many uh, situations, and in some in some samples it has appeared correlated states. So, in 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 like for example, cases in which it believed that the correlated state does not appear due to a particular screening, like uh, the proximity to a gate. Another thing is that uh, so it has been claimed that uh, phonons. Uh, so some people, for example, I have mentioned this uh, linear uh, resistivity um, in and um, with temperature. Some people claims that it is for uh, says that this is uh, is due to electronic correlations. So it's still not clear. And I think um, that uh, there are also some other issues. For example, um, uh, associated to. Uh, whether they could induce uh, this, I have heard in some talk, but I haven't seen any paper, but I think that it, there are some other things in which they could even induce some kind of uh, negative uh, Hunt's coupling, which is something that, uh, for example, in correlated electron has been found in fullerenes. So 
I think this is so. So there is. I have followed less the um, the uh, discussion with Phonos, but there is there is uh, um, there are several issues in which uh, so knowing Phonos is is for sure interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Valbe, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much for your talk, Lenny. I just have a question about when when you have like a, a clear moth gap. If you increase the temperature, did you see if the moth gap collapses or not? Have you checked it? So well, uh, in uh, this is something which, for example, appears to another uh, the level of the uh, So normally when you increase the uh, the temperature, the system becomes more incoherent. So really, uh, mod gap does not close as, as a kind of uh, single particle gap. So somehow it's going to just, uh, so, so the system becomes, uh, is, is still insulating, but of course at some point you just cannot determine whether it's insulating or metallic because so, so you have all the temperature. But it does not close as, as a, a symmetry breaking gap. I see. So we okay. have checked not huge temperatures. So, for example, here is, is why I say this. Uh, so, here I just see that this, it's in fact, so this was not metallic. Uh, so, this was metallic and it has become even less metallic. Uh, we have done some checks in the insulating state at these temperatures, it, it does not. But of course, if you go to very high temperatures at some point, you will just see all this field. So just, but very incoherent, not really um, a quasi-particle band, like in, 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 um, yeah, I see. In I see. But yeah, it seems that the, the lower Hubbard band, it's up shifting, right? When you increase the temperature in your dense off states, right? Because you see this shoulder here. It's related to this. No, the lower Hubbard band. This. Yes, this one. Uh, it's up shifting, right? Uh, yeah, so we haven't gone there more. In fact, we were all... Uh, so we are still finishing some details. We were uh, also surprised um, uh, for that. But, uh, well, I think it's, it's, it's associated a bit to how there are the, the quasi-particle is, is melting. So somehow what we think, if we go beyond, is why I say we are still finishing this calculation, that probably not be really a closing of the gap, but kind of everything quite yes, incoherent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So one thing is that this, this particular band structure is a bit peculiar in the sense that there are a lot of band of singularities and things like that that are giving a bit of um, Okay. Behaviors, yeah. Yeah. But can can you quantify the degree of correlations you have? Can you get the quasi particle uh, wave or something like that? Yeah. Well, one way in which um, uh, we quantify that is um, well, starting from the self energy, what we call the uh, quasi particle wave. Yeah. Uh, how if you are in a, a system which is non interacting it's uh, the quasi-particle weight is one in which it's somehow that's like the overlap between the um, uh, single particle electron and, and, um, and your uh, wave function. Uh, so we get that from the self energy, but this, if we quantify it with this quantity, which is between zero and one. So let's say, uh, for example, to give you an idea, let's see here. Uh, so, so here, this is one, here this is zero. Um, so here this is of the order of 0 0.37 or something like that. I know I have this nice. So, so here this is already um, uh, quite correlated, but, but is that. So if you are very, very close to, to mod, this, you just know it's very strongly correlated, but it, this, this quantity is, it um, um, loses a bit the meaning. Uh, one thing is that normally this was a part in, in simple theories, this quantity which with the one we quantify that, in simple theories, it gives the renormalization of the mass here. And the, uh, in this uh, single uh, particle band, 
So uh, somehow is that it becomes kind of narrower and you can introduce that in as a, um, uh, as a mass randomization. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions, comments? So maybe I can uh, ask one. So can you comment a little bit more about the case in, in which the band is uh, topological and how you can describe this? Is this the, the hard part about doing the calculation? So you say for this case or for the, or for the other cases? I, I think for the uh, twisted bilayer, that's the okay. one that you, for you the twisted bilayer, on. Let's say there are several things. So one is, okay, so people at some point, uh, uh, when the field started, uh, propose a kind of barrier model just for these two bands, okay? So the, this barrier model for these two bands, it was very, they were very strange uh, barrier functions uh, in the sense that, well, they were, it was um, uh, an hexagonal lattice, but these banner models, they were uh, not, so the, the, let's say the, the weight of the, um, uh, of the, so, so the, let's say the, the region where the, the, the weight was, so the, the electron weight, so the, the um, uh, it was not the place where it was centered. And different um, uh, wave functions were overlapping a lot. This is what is what's called the spinner function. There was a lot of discussion because already from the very beginning, uh, so they were, so there was a kind of symmetry in which it was, but it was broken. And so somehow they were kind of um, a bit killed the symmetry. So they, it, it, they have killed the topology of the problem. So uh, in reality, these bands, so here you have Dirac's and to do that in which you just have two bands, two bands which are the end of the day are four bands, okay, because they are the two valleys, um, in which, so then uh, they have to open a gap here and they were losing the Dirac's. And this was associated with the fact that instead of, so if you open a gap here in this system, uh, the churn number of these bands in, in the real system, it's, it's, uh, finite, it's finite, it's one minus one, and, and in this model it was zero. So then the, the issue was that you could, then there was a proposal. Uh, so there was a lot of issue there, but because this symmetry is not absolutely perfect, that somehow uh, it was finally, I think, agreed that that, um, that was not, so, so you are losing really uh, something. This is very much fine tuned. It's still some people, it's still people doing some kind of things, but is that your, your bands, you are not getting um, uh, currently the churn number there. Now, and if you are not getting currently the churn number, some of the properties are not going to show up. Now, the other issue, the other possibility is that you do some kind of modeling which, and that was uh, proposed a few months after uh, Swiss Ballet Graphene was happening, is that, okay, you say, okay, well, you, can I still keep this uh, symmetry. In fact, this symmetry, which is called C2T, is that the, the joint symmetry between inversion symmetry and time reversal symmetry, if you uh, have all these, uh, so if you include more bands in your system. And in this way, you can do different kinds of models. You can do models which are five bands, six bands, eight bands, or, or 10 bands. This is for the eight band model. Uh, so, and then, uh, and then, well, so in that sense, so the topology was believed to be satisfied. And in particular, this, all the symmetries that kind of models uh, satisfy all the spatial symmetries. Now, there is an issue which is, is much more subtle, and that was, well, it was only pointed by Bernevik, but it was also last year, last, last fall, it's when, when he um, uh, reinforced the idea is the fact that there is a symmetry, uh, which is a kind of particle hole symmetry, not particle hole of K uh, and uh, with K, but with K and minus K. So it's, this is a symmetry in which, um, so it's, it's not true in the modeling with, from which to start really the twist by layer model, but it's an approximation that many people do. Is there is something, uh, so in the model that start from the 
KP model. There is a term, which is some kind of rotation, uh, which is very small. So if you throw this term away, you have a given symmetry in your model, is, is what I say. It's a model it's, it's in which the energies of your, uh, you have, if you have an energy A of K, so okay, so an energy for a level, for uh, minus K, you have um, also an eigenvalue with this uh, minus energy. So with this, yeah, with the, the energy is the, the, the one with, uh, with the other, um, uh, at the other side. And so the question is uh, um, whether that's important. So Bernabe claims that, so in the real, is what I said, the real system, the real experimental TVG, that particle hole symmetry is not exact. And, um, and in fact, is when you introduce correlation here, there are some kind of, uh, already at the heart tree level, you, you have an important deformation of the bands. So it's, it's, it's the specific thing in which, um, so, so is that in the true model is not perfect the symmetry. If you consider the symmetry, the topology is what is called robust in which you cannot build the model. So here there are two different uh, sources of, of um, uh, difficulty. One is building the Bayer model where you can have it or not. Uh, in terms of the topology, this is what is still under discussion. The other part is the fact that, uh, well, uh, you have um, a lot of orbitals uh, because it's, it's, these are the orbitals that you introduce in your model and the, the fact that you uh, have to multiply them by two in, and uh, uh, due to the other valley. And so that complicates your life when doing the calculation. So this is a part which is associated to having a lot of orbitals. And then the other part is, which is the subtle part, and uh, is that the meaning on, and the issue of this, um, of this uh, project, of this symmetry, that is this particle hole symmetry that Bernabic is discussing. Okay, thanks. So for me, it was nice to see an overview since I do not follow the literature. So with your talk, I had an overview about what is going on on this subject. So thanks. So what, are there other questions, comments? So nobody's handing the hand, so Maybe we can uh, stop uh, recording and maybe somebody will come to, to make an, another question. So I will, so thanks again, Lenny, for accepting the invitation and for the talk. So thanks, thanks to you for the, for the invitation.